Welcome. Here's a cute puzzle from Chapter 5 of my uh, first volume of the Thinking Mathematics series. Uh, it goes as follows. Imagine there's a great big uh, design drawn on the ground, it's simply just a 5 by 5 set of squares. Oops, I'm a lousy drawer. And imagine there are 25 people standing in this grid, one person per cell. And the idea is that a blow to whistle, each person is to take one step, either up or down, left or right to a neighboring cell. So maybe this person will step up, maybe this person will step left, maybe this person will step right, they can't turn left, they'll be out of the grid, and so on. And the idea is, can they simultaneously each take one step in some direction and rearrange themselves to end up again being 25 people in a grid, one person per cell? Now, I'm going to give away the answer, so maybe this is the time to pause the video and just play around with it. Can you actually move 25 people around this way? So one person per cell, each takes one step. Can they rearrange themselves simultaneously to again be one person per cell? All right, I'm about to give away the answer. Here goes. Pause, pause, pause. Time to click off. All right, now I'm in it. Here goes. If you've played with this puzzle for a while, you'll get the sense that the answer is no. And there's actually a very lovely reason why. Chapter 5 is all about parity. Parity means being in one of two states. And there's a natural parity associated with a grid of cells. Namely, if you think about a checkerboard, whoops, where's my pen god? Each cell could either be shaded or unshaded. So there's a natural way to think of parity, one of two states in a checkerboard. Da, 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 da. So maybe this shell is shaded, 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 shaded. This is very boring to watch me do this, especially particularly boring if I kept saying shaded all the way through this. Here goes. And the thing to note about in this puzzle, that if someone is standing in a cell that corresponds to a shaded cell, no matter what they do, they are forced to walk to an unshaded one. And anyone in an unshaded cell, no matter which direction they go, will be forced to walk to a shaded cell. So that means anyone in a shaded cell is forced to go to unshaded, and anyone in unshaded is forced to go to shaded. But there's the problem. The count how many shaded cells there are, I think there are 13 of them, and unshaded, there is 12 of them. So you've got 12 people, so you've got 13 people, sorry, in the shaded cells trying to move into only 12 spots of unshaded. Obviously that cannot be done. This puzzle cannot be solved. All right. So then, that's a neat, neat little trick with parity that makes it obvious in the end that this puzzle cannot be solved. What if I now played the game that one person's allowed to stand still? For example, suppose Albert here, whoops, where's my pen, is standing still. Still, could the remaining 24 people around him move one person per cell and rearrange themselves? Or what if Cuthbert over here were to stand still? Could the puzzle be solved with Cuthbert? So there's a variation. Which people can stand still and have them work, move around them? Or in fact, you know, the great thing about mathematics is really about creativity in play. I just invented a variation in this puzzle about one person standing still. Uh, another variation would be, what if I allowed people to take steps up, down, left, or right, or a diagonal step? Or what if I only allowed one person to take a diagonal step and everyone else must move in vertical horizontal motions? In fact, that's, this is the great joy of mathematics. Now I've given you a basic idea of a puzzle. Invent variations and see if you can answer your variations. Hours are fun to be had. Also, hours are fun to be had with Chapter 5. There's deep stuff in this parity idea. Thanks very much.